very good. Yes. Very good. Um, she, uh, so Jodie has worked with Netflix before, and uh, so we were very lucky that they gave her the script and uh, for Archangel, and she appreciated it and felt that there were lots of things in there that resonated with her that she wanted to direct a film about. So, um, yeah, no, it was great, and we, so we got together very early in the process and, and uh, shaped the script together and had a really great time. She's, you know, incredibly skilled in front and behind the camera and uh, so uh, she just had a very unique vision for the film. She knew she wanted it to be an indie drama um, set in America, you know, set in sort of blue collar America and um, it's just a great opportunity for us to, to bring that vision into the series because across the series we have lots of different genres and lots of different scale, you know, so we have Archangel and then we have something like USS Callister which is a big space epic. So it's uh, yeah, it was it was it was, it was a great experience for Jodie. Well, it's hard. It's definitely it's a challenge to talk about without spoiling things. What we can say, I think, is that we can certainly say it's a big space epic. It's it's, it's nearly feature length. It's like or it's seventy five minutes, so it sort of feels a bit like a movie. It's very ambitious. Um, it's got playful elements in it as well as quite a lot of darkness. And really, it came about from us discussing how we would do a Black Mirror version of a big space opera, basically. That was that was sort of where the conversation came from. So hopefully it, it doesn't disappoint in those terms. It manages to be, in some ways it's quite a mainstream story. It's quite a sort of quite an accessible story, mm -hmm. but it has got levels of Black Mirror quirkiness and weirdness to it that, mm -hmm. that I think give it a dark, edge and throughout this season we've got all our episodes are completely different so we've got Archangel which we've mentioned and Callister um, and we've also got episodes like Metalhead which is a really gritty sort of survival horror we've got Hang the DJ which is as close as we get to a rom-com we've got um, Crocodile which is a very um, tense techno noir thriller and we've got um, Black Museum which is like three stories in one kind of like when we did a white Christmas one it's like a Tree House of Horrors, sort of three nasty stories. I don't know why I'm doing this, so I'm demonstrating it. <laughs> three stories meshed together, that's more than three. Mm. Many stories meshed together into, into one whole. So all our episodes this time around are very, very different yeah. to each other. There ain't going to be a sequel, I don't think. No, I don't think. I think we want to leave Yorkie and Kelly there, basically. We don't want to mess with that, because uh, um, so we wouldn't do a sequel certainly for the sake of it, and if we had a brilliant idea for one, then maybe, but I, my, my instinct is, I think, that we would leave them there, or certainly not do a sequel as, a, as an episode. Mm. Generally speaking, the reaction to that was, was extremely gratifying. It's really nice to see that so many people took it to heart, and when you get people sort of creating fan art, or doing little drawings of Kelly and Yorkie, or going out on Halloween, dressed uh, couples going out dressed as them, that's really heartwarming. Do, do we think the world was better before that? Yeah, it was really better, it was no. better for us. No, because actually, really, I mean, technology is like, you know, the printing press is technology and that changed the world and improved it and I think we're just coming to terms with... It, it, technology gives you great, uh, gives humankind great advantages and great potential to do great things. It's just that it's also very powerful and we're working out how it works. Our show is a sort of worried what-if show, but we're not. Uh, I don't think I'm particularly actually that pessimistic about technology. I'm a geek and I like it. So you couldn't do this show if you didn't like technology because yeah. we end up having to think about it so much. Yeah, and also to make, a, to make a story that feels realistic, you have to be using a technology that people would let into their lives that improves it or, you know, that makes their life easier. Um, so that's got to be the starting point because if it's a technology that's, you know, that's um, evil or corrupt, that's not a world I sort of understand, so it wouldn't have any resonance. 